Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I'm coming to you from my my REAs, my eagle's nest, high above uh, Waikiki Beach. We're on the 25th floor, uh, right next to the Catholic Church, St. Augustine's Catholic Church. In fact, the altar is just directly below my my where where my studio is. And we're looking out at the beautiful beaches of Waikiki, and um, I'm uh, upset because I see perfect waves, and I'm in here, and I have to talk to Deacon Gerard Marie Anthony today at Senego Surf right now. But actually, we're, we're excited to invite everybody to come out to our Deep Adventure retreat December 7th through the 11th. So if you're interested, go to deepadventure.com. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I was in Boise, Idaho at Boise Salt and Light Radio a few weeks ago, and I just love the people there because that radio station, Brian Howell and and the others that are there, um, they... Um, and when I first started my radio show, I drove all over all over the country, visited about radio stations, about 20 radio stations, said, hey, will you carry my my show? And they said, yeah, we're going to carry your show on the weekends. And then later on, EWTN picked it up on their B feed, which means here's the show you might want to use as, a, as an alternative to other shows on the weekends. And then they made it part of the A feed. So Boise was one of those special places in my heart and uh, and the pre and the people there so I got to go out and spend time with them and we had a beautiful cigar night we had we, we sold out the this new cigar bar called the vault and uh, the men just gathered together and it was just couldn't have been a more manly environment and then I began to ask them what are you reading what are you reading these days and it was so interesting how some of them were really digging deep into some great books that I think GK Chesterton and CS Lewis and Father Don Calloway's books hopefully a couple of my books but but these men are going deeper in their faith and uh, and and then I asked them what is your prayer time like and how many of you pray the liturgy of the hour and I just want to clue you in if you don't pray the liturgy of the hour or if you um, uh, you got to do it. <laughs> it's so wonderful. De uh, our, our deacon who is with us today, you know, all the deacons and priests and nuns, all the religious, uh, pray through the liturgy of the hour. You can get the Magnificat, by the way, uh, which is a kind of toned down version. It's the same stuff that's in the big liturgy of the hour, just more um, um, lay friendly because it's not so much, you know, it's a little bit light, but it's so beautiful. How when I'm reading, praying the liturgy of the hour first thing in the morning with my cup of coffee, looking out over the ocean, that you read the beautiful scripture verses in the office of readings, and then you read the writings. Like right now, we're reading the writings of Saint Ambrose on the mysteries, uh, uh, you know, the sacraments, and uh, oh, how it just makes your heart just filled with uh, with joy. So I like I challenge the men there to, to pray for an hour a day. Spend an hour of a, a, a day, maybe the rosary for 20 minutes or the liturgy of the hour for 20 minutes and then maybe add in uh, some some reading for 20 minutes, but get that hour in every day. Squeeze it in somehow so that the Lord can really speak to you. It's it's your channel to the Lord. We have with us today our guest Deacon Gerard Marie Anthony and I get to see you. You're you're where are you? You're in Chantilly area of Virginia, right? Yes, yes, and I'm, I'm. Uh, it's the Dulles Airport place. So you fly into Dulles, you'll probably get to be in my parish. So <laughs> yeah, that's so cool, man. So, so Deacon, we're going to be uh, out there for a wedding. Uh, a friend of mine who's a polo player, David Tafuri, he's one of the guys on on Fox News. Uh, from oh, time to time, good. but he, he's a radical guy. He he, he was uh, playing a couple of years ago and broke his uh, broke his wrist. Broke his arm, oh. so he duct taped his arm together, and then duct taped that arm to the to the polo <laughs> mallet. So I guess we're gonna get to go out there uh, and uh, and see them play polo, and then celebrate their wedding with them, and then and then we will definitely be stepping in. We're gonna stop in and see what see if you're up to no good. Have oh, some hey, breakfast yeah. with you or something. What a, that'll be so fun. Oh, that would be a blessing. And I know uh, you know, you're talking about his duct taping and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm a big basketball player. That reminds me one time we were playing a game and we were doing our warm ups and I was getting so pumped up about it that I twisted my ankle in during warm ups and I was like, I was like, Oh no, oh no. So 
we we're going up to the coach and the people were like, yeah, you should tell coach that you broke your ankle. But I'm like, I don't want to get taken out. I don't want to get taken out. So the coach made me jump the ball. <laughs> to oh. do the jump ball. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I won the tip. But then after that, I just started fouling people because I was in so much pain. <laughs> <laughs> Take me out, coach. You know, you, so you jumped good. It was the landing part that was kind of tough, right? Exactly, exactly. It was like, I now know what it feels like to do the karate kid. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, that that stork pose or whatever that was called? Yeah. <laughs> you know, duct tape, I used to tell people as a surfer that I was sponsored by duct tape. And I even, because, you know, surfers are famous for getting duct tape because it, 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 it'll seal a waterproof leak on your board when it gets cracked, you know, it's made out of fiberglass. Oh, yeah. And it stays on. It doesn't fall off in the water. So I actually had my 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 uh, shaper uh, make a surfboard and he airbrushed duct tape along the rails. Oh, wow. <laughs> the rails of it. And I'd say, "Yeah, I'm sponsored by by duct tape. You want you want you want one of their their bumper stickers?" I'm like, well, "Yeah." So I'd take my duct, <laughs> roll of duct tape out, just rip it off and put it on their bumper. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's all fancy. You can get all kinds of different colors. But so I don't know how we got distracted on this whole conversation about duct tape. But I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, in September. Yeah. Uh, really, that will be a real joy. You really mm-hmm. emanate the joy of the Lord, and I know that comes from your prayer life. Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, the Fulton Sheen would call it the hour that makes his day, and I would say just to add on to that, cause I just I just came from Fulton Sheen's uh, shrine. And uh, it's not only the time that makes my day, but it's the time that makes me who I am. So like if I don't have my poor life, uh, you can see like the change and notice it. But I would say just because I just came from Fulton Sheen's tomb, which was amazing. I was like on cloud nine mm. and uh, I, I did a day trip up to Peoria uh, just to see them. And wow. I had to, I flew into uh, Midway and then I drove down to Peoria, which is about a two-hour drive. Yeah, so I had burned some CDs for the trip. And uh, when I went to rent the car, they gave me an upgrade, but it didn't have a CD player in it. So I oh, said, yeah. "Yeah, can I change? Can I change um, cars? Because I I need a CD player." And the lady that was there, she was a young lady. Uh, she said, "Ah, uh, a CD player." Uh, we don't have that. What app. is that? Said, oh, no, no. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you, did you bring your Walkman with you? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, this was the funny thing because I used to have one of those disc players where you would play the CDs. But yeah. I actually showed her the CDs, and it was—I mean, it was like eye-opening for her. What's and, a CD? Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really great to see her. Uh, I mean, like this little thing, this this CD, something that she had never heard of before. <laughs> you know, and I mean, it was making me feel, making me feel like I'm like I'm like, wait a second, I'm not that much older than you, you know? Like, what do you? Right. Mean? But it drew us together because we had the older wisdom, which was me and the CDs, and then her trying to learn from me, you know. So I, I mean, it really brought out a spot. Did she learn anything, Deacon? <laughs> <laughs> she, she did learn how to actually uh, play a CD. <laughs> really? You know, I used to use those when I'd go hiking at night, or you know, do a lot of mountain hiking. When I was in California, right out my back door, and then I used it uh, when I pedaled across the United States on my bicycle. I wore out four of those those DVD players. You know, just oh, wow. bumping yeah, around. Yeah. It would, I had to. Have, only way I could hang on to was have it on my waist. It, it got me across, but I would, but but I mean, I actually warm out. You know, they're supposed to be shock proof, shock resistance, but yeah. they not when you pedal across the United States. But um, so, um, Deacon, I have to ha- ha- turn this to a more serious subject now. What's wrong yes. with this younger generation? <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. I know that you have a great love for the for for young adults and in, in, in high school age and college and career age, and that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, today on the man cave of, of what the Lord, how, how, what, what, where the younger generation is and what the Lord's speaking to them. If people want to get in touch with you, Deacon, how do they do that? Uh, they can just go to my website. It's uh, www.jmjgerardmarie.com. So that's the G-E-R-A-R-D-M as in man, A-R-I-E 
Dot com. We all know how to spell Marie Deacon. Do you know every one of my <laughs> sisters and my sister-in-laws and I, I, my wife, everyone has the same middle name. It's Marie. Isn't that interesting? We're talking with Deacon Gerard Marie Anthony. How do you spell Marie again? No, I'm just kidding. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. I want to invite all you men out there to come and join in uh, Bear's Man Cave. We have just uh, tremendous men there that are uh, like you. I see. I just say we're all bozos on the same bus. We're all just trying to help each other get there to be good men, to be good leaders, to be good fathers, good husbands, good providers, good protectors. We're just all we're all there together. And what I love about it is the men are just so transparent. No one's trying to act like they're super holy or super spiritual they're just saying, being honest with each other you know sharing their challenges but also their victories and their inspirations and uh and um and we also have zoom video uh meetups every couple of weeks so it's it's pretty rare i think to have an opportunity to meet with men from all over the world and see what the lord is uh, is speaking to them it's really interesting to fi find that common thread and so we invite you to go to deepadventure.com and join bears man cave there's a little button that says warning don't touch this button that's the button you touch if you want if you want to become a member where we have deacon gerard anthony <laughs> gerard marie anthony with us from uh, the virginia area near dulles airport saint timothy's parish yes yes yeah so what's wrong with this younger generation <laughs> that's what they used to say when i was young this younger yeah. generation so what what's wrong with this younger generation deacon i think what this is the, what i would say the thing that's wrong with them is they don't see all that's right with themselves mm. um and this this generation can be very cynical and they and it's tough for them to see good and i and i think that it's important for them to be able to see the good in themselves and the gifts that they have so well said yeah they they um i mean and i think this is this is somewhat neat i mean just from teaching and talking with young adults and doing like theologies on taps and stuff a lot of times when you go up and you talk to them there's always the kind of what's bad about me or you know what's bad about my friendships and stuff like that mm. but can you imagine if they could change and switch over to say what's good with me what's good in my relationships because if you can see the good in people then you can see god and if you can see god and you have the peace that you're looking for, you know, and that's that's also in part of becoming a better person. So instead of saying what's wrong with this generation, we have to say what's right with this younger generation. Yeah, yes, exactly, exactly. Because here's the thing: if you have, if you, uh, it is important to stay away from vice, right, and to stay away from what's evil. But if that's where you stop, you never actually grow in goodness and virtue. And so oftentimes what we have to do, uh, Fulton Sheen, again, I, I love that guy. He would always say, don't be so concerned with the vice that you don't grow in virtue. And as men, and even as young adults, even if you're women, a woman, you have to see, okay, how can I grow in virtue? Because then you grow in love. And the more you grow in love, that's the happier you'll become because that's what we're made for, love. We're made for love. That's so beautiful. And I love that in the earlier segment you talked about you feel most like yourself when you're in prayer. 
And I know uh, I was talking with Deacon Harold Burke Sivers yesterday. He said the exact same words. He said, I feel most like myself when I'm in, in prayer or when I'm in, a, in Eucharistic adoration. And it's so true. Yeah. If you start from that point uh, before the Lord who loved you and gave you these unique gifts and qualities and characteristics, and, weak, and, and, and there's weaknesses that come with that too, um, yeah. but that he embraces all of that, then you have a sense of, of uh, your mission in life, with, which I think, how, how do young people discover that? I think it's really important for young people to find their imagio dei in the Lord. And yes. How do they, yeah. how do they it's, it, you know, the trajectory in a young person's life can be so dramatic. If they make a, one little decision, it can be, when you look at that, that angle of attack, like when I, hit a, when I hit a driver off the tee, I never know where it's going to go. But if it, even if it goes just a couple degrees off, it could go way off into the rough behind a tree. You know? So that, hitting that trajectory and knowing uh, how, do pe- how do young people discern the direction that they should go? Well, I think there's, there's a, a couple of things that I would recommend for them first. The first thing is know your purpose. You know, It's like if you know... Like our Lord says, seek first the kingdom of God and the rest will be given unto you. Make sure that you know that you're meant you're meant for something great. Uh, don't settle for mediocrity. That's the first thing that I would Praise say. Praise God. I, <laughs> because a lot of times with young people, they're like, well, I'm not that good at that. So I'm not going to I'm not going to do those kind of things. Even I remember I used to tra- uh, coach track. And just because someone didn't win the first time they went, ran their race, they wanted to quit. I'm like, no, no, no. You got to train. You got to be able to put the effort for. But mm. that means you have to be able to dream big enough so that you know, I can be great, even if I'm not there at this moment. So even like with vocations, finding that that woman of your dreams, finding uh, that that <laughs> that call to religious life or consecrated life or even just the call to service which isn't a just thing because we're all called to serve and i think that's the second thing look for the gifts that god has put in you so that you can serve others your charisms usually are a big clue to what god wants you to do like i i remember one time i went to a family reunion And this guy, he had just found our family, right? Uh, My family's from Louisiana, so we have a big family. Oh, really? Okay. (laughs) And he found the family. He was like, yeah, you know, I came in with the Anthony's, and I see I really fit in in this group. This is us Anthony's. We love to eat. And all of us are shaking our like, yeah, we sure do. We sure do. He's like, that's Anthony's. We love to talk. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we got that too. (laughs) Then I, I leaned over to my dad and I said, he didn't say we love to sleep. And then he said, oh, you get that from your mom's side. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But it is true. I was reading uh, uh, in, the, in, in uh, the Liturgy of the Hour, I guess the other day, or maybe it was at the Mass, that you know, if you try to keep your life, you lose it. If you give away your life, you'll find it. You know, And I always yeah. thought, well, when the Bible says, you know, to serve the Lord, I always I always thought it meant surf. You know that you could, we're supposed to go like surf, but then I realized yeah. no, not surfing, serving the Lord. But I know it's it's true as as you identify your gifts and your talents. There's a verse that says to fathers, while you're on your way with your child along the river or wherever you are, teach them the ways of the Lord, and they will not depart. Uh, they, they will not depart from that way, and the way that they should go. And I think the way that they should go isn't just about loving God and, 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 and pursuing a life of virtue, but God has given you certain gifts and talents that are meant for you to grow that direction. You know, the, the gifts and talents that God's given you, that's the direction you're supposed to go. That, that's, it's like a plant wants to grow a certain way. If God's given you certain gifts and talents, begin to find a way to, to enhance those and to serve with those and watch how the Lord uh, begins to direct your path. Yeah, and I think you said something that's very important, which is don't just try to be like everybody else. Because I think especially when you're young, you want to kind of fit in. 
So a lot of times you hide your gifts under a bushel basket as it says uh. in scripture. You're like, well, I, like for me, I, I am like a big, uh, I like to laugh, you know, and I, and I love jokes and, and I love to, to be able to just have fun in life. And sometimes if you're around like a very, you know, a serious group, you think, oh, well, I can't be funny anymore. Now, of course, there's uh. times and places for things, but God giving you that humor is actually a gift. For you yeah. to be able to be able to take life so fully that we can actually laugh at the things that happen in life. And there's a lot of wacky things that have happened. <laughs> <laughs> but that humor also can be a gift to others. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's something that's very wonderful. If you can know that, hey, I have something in me to make me laugh then you can help others you know? yeah it's like it's like um we, i always say if you can make someone laugh you can hit them in the mouth and not break their lip you know you can in other words <laughs> if you're engaging with someone and you're joyful they're more ready to hear the truth also we're talking with deacon gerard marie anthony from saint timothy parish in new jersey uh this is the bear wasnick adventure deacon where can they find you again at jmjgerardmarie.com JMJ Gerard. What does JMJ stand for? Jesus, uh, Mary, Jesus, and Joseph. Mary, and Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> You're so Catholic, dude. Okay, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. We want to invite everybody to come to Waikiki Beach for the December 7th through the 11th uh, Deep Adventure Quest Retreat. This is for uh, men and women. Bring you, come, a religious priest. Everyone is invited to come. Students are invited to come. Bring your keiki, your ohana with you. Uh, it's it, The retreat will be for people that are confirmation age or older. If you have younger ones, maybe uh, parents will share with each other to kind of watch the, the kids because all of the Retreat will be down on the beach under some palm trees, and the kids can play in the sand right next to where we are. So uh, it'll be it'll be great. It'll, it'll be a, it'll be a wonderful experience. And in the mornings we have our retreat. In the afternoon people can learn to surf or go for a hike or swim in a waterfall or frolic in the waves. So it's a great place when you re- when you recreate. It's a good time for God to work in you to recreate something new in you too. So please come. Go to deepadventure.com and and let us know you want to come to the retreat. Uh, you got to kind of search for it, but you'll see there's a there's a button there for the retreat. We're talking with Deacon um, Gerard Marie Anthony from St. Timothy's Parish in, in Chantilly, in the Chantilly area by Dulles Airport in, in Virginia. I'm just so stoked that I get to be coming and see you soon. You know, you were talking about how, how do we find out what our, what our direction in our life is. And you mentioned one of the first things I think we do is we, we need to, we need to, um, we need to have a personal creed. You know, in my, in my boyhood, my boyhood hero was Duke Hanamoku. He's a great legendary man that gave a low, spread aloha around the world and also uh, re, reopened the doors for, for, the, uh, for surfing. Surfing had been squashed, actually, by the, the Protestant um, uh, missionaries when they came out here. They squashed oh, wow. the culture oh. and, the, uh, and the language and of course the hula and surfing. But um, you know, the Catholic way has always been enculturation, which means 
God's already working with people. Just the culture that they have is already something that God has been working with them in, to some degree or another, and to purify yeah. it and to sanctify it and redeem it. And so, anyway, surfing came back, and that was the Duke. And he had a creed. He said, my creed is to share, al- I, I share aloha with everyone I meet. That is what I live by, and that is my creed. What is your personal creed? We need to ask you, we need to ask ourselves, what creed do I live by? For us at Deep Adventure Ministries, my creed is the most radical pursuit you can have in life is to abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. That's it. You know, God's will. Just do God's will and you're where, where you get to be where God's doing the stuff. You know, you get to you get to watch God move when you're in his will. If you're sitting off on the sidelines or going the opposite direction, you don't see get to see what God's up to. But when you are in his will, God does stuff, and you get to see him do it. He does a, and he does amazing things. I mean, that's what we have, to, we have to do. I mean, I think that's another thing. We have to say yes to the adventure that God has in store for us. Uh, oftentimes, we want to do things our way. But if we don't say yes to the adventures that he has in store for us, we end up becoming a lesser version of ourselves that God actually intended. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, I, you know, I'm a, a young adult deacon. I would have never imagined this adventure, you know, but mm-hmm. I kept saying yes. And there's such joy. I mean, it just like oozes out of me. It's like, mm-hmm. I can't wait to, you know, till the next day. I can't wait to go to the parish. I can't wait to meet my next person or our talk yeah. or something like that. Uh, so being able to have the courage to say yes, that is something that's crucial. And that doesn't necessarily mean God saying, "Okay, go go to some poor village in China and share the gospel." Um, I think I, I know I felt like that was going to happen if I gave my <laughs> surrendered everything to the Lord. Although, though it could, it really yeah. could. Um, but uh, it's it the Lord uh, has a has a natural, beautiful path for you. But quite often, <clears throat> mo- a moment of adversity will define you, young people. Yes. Uh, that that's really how you are defined is how you respond to adversity. I remember when I was younger because I had such a wonderful life with my 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 the, my family. I thought, oh, this is the way it's going to be all the time when I'm sick. Someone's going to come and bring me chicken's noodle soup, and <laughs> and you know, life is just going to be so easy and good. And then when something hard would happen, I'd go, oh, well, that's unusual. Well, I'll get through that, and then that'll be over with. And then another one comes, and another speed bump comes. And yeah. really, a lot of times, the Lord uh, the Lord allows adversity in our lives. Uh, a young woman who's pregnant making a decision to keep the child. Um, so many other things that can come up. There's an illness in the family, and and the younger people need to, to step up and, and, and work and help provide for the family. Difficult challenges like that. Uh, but adversity will find you, and your job, my mother used to say, was to, ch- was to turn and face it. Turn and face the adversity. And then you turn that adversity into adventure. Quite often, that adversity... Well, I always say the adventure begins at the detour. You know, when things don't go the way you've got planned, but you turn and face it and deal with it in faith, that's when you get wings. That's that's yeah. when your life, it may it may take you a while to get going down the runway, but when you face adversity and you're honest with life and you don't run from, you don't run from life, uh, you grow stronger and God begins to open up more and more doors for you. Yes, yes. And I think that it's so important for people to realize that about the cross that's what Mm. molds us into it it's there's a a great saying i can't remember who it's from but it says the shape of god is not a diamond it's a cross you know and so it's like if you can if you can see cross that's how not only the shape of god but that's what shapes us into the image of god that cross so we have to keep being molded into that and the more that you can say that adventure begins i love that detour analogy that you just used the more that you can stay on the right road and even take that detour that brings you back to god's path that's the happier you'll become um i think if if you know you have adversity and stuff like that i remember there's this woman who came up to me on the train and she was like uh yeah can you help me to the basilica and i said oh yeah sure 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 and she was just so happy and bubbly and i said can i ask you something she said uh yeah i said how do you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in life she smiled at me and she said oh that's easy 
you do it even if you weren't getting paid for it mm. you know and and, and I mean, and that's that's the joy, you know, that's when you get sometimes that cross, like for me being stuck on the train, that cross allowed me to get a deep insight into something that God was showing. Like, yeah, look for those things that drive you that you would do even if you weren't getting paid for it. You know? Right. Follow, that's again following your following the gifts and the, the natural inclination that God's given you. You know, part part of it too is is to keep keep make sure there's there's fuel in the tank. I know, for example, riding my motorcycle, I've crashed my motorcycle three times, oh. and every time I was going less than two miles an hour. Oh, <laughs> all right, wow. So you don't wow. find your balance and direction when you when you're just st- st- sitting at a stoplight on a motorcycle <clears throat> or as you're you know going slow you have to go at a certain speed uh, and then you can <clears throat> and then you can uh, then it, it the you know I forget what the <clears throat> what it is but you it it it, it balances you out right because you're in motion <laughs> and then you if you yeah. sit on your motorcycle you got to tr- work really hard to turn the steering wheel if you're just sitting on it but if you're riding it you can turn that wheel so part of it yeah. is my dad used to say, we write in pencil, God writes in pen. Write down your goals. Write down the obstacles. Write down when you're going to accomplish them. Write down how you're going to accomplish them. And write down goals that are going to make you grow to become those goals. And then as you begin to move, then God can direct your path. But as long as you're sitting still, what I mean, what what's he going to do? As long as you got that inertia, being a couch potato, or whatever, how is God going to direct you? So get get the bike in motion, and then or get the car in motion, get the motorcycle in motion, and then God can say, okay, now you found your equilibrium. Now turn right. Now turn left. But the thing mm-hmm. about a motorcycle is you got to fuel it up about every 150 miles. So that's yes. part of our walk with the Lord too. Is make sure you you fuel up. Make sure that you're spending that you're spending time with the Lord. But get get yeah. the motorcycle in motion. Get your life in motion, uh, pursuing worthwhile goals. And then the Lord may say, "Well, that's kind of what I meant, but I want you to do this instead." <laughs> While never giving yeah. up on that that tenacity and the perseverance, press on towards your goals and let God begin to direct your path as you're moving towards towards them. We're talking with Deacon uh, Gerard Marie Anthony, and where can they find you, Deacon? At jmjgerardmarie.com. Or you can go to St. Timothy Parish in the Chantilly area, or is yes, it the Manassas yeah, you, area? Yeah, you can go in Chantilly. Yeah, the, the church is in Chantilly, but I live yeah. in Manassas. And I'm going to see you soon. I'll see you within a month. Uh, well, I mean, in the month of September, which is probably about the time the show is airing. I'm not sure because we pre-record these. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. We want to give a shout out to our mama bears out there. We love we love our mama bears. Uh, we know that it's your prayers uh, that to a great extent power our ministry. And so the Lord has been speaking to us more and more about opening up a, a, a window of ministry, more direct ministry to the women. If you get our newsletter, the Deep Adventure. If you go to deepadventure.com, you get our weekly newsletter. We send you the, that week's uh, radio show, only a YouTube version, so you can see it instead of just listen to it. And, uh, and then in there, there's a little segment just for the mama bears. And my sister Tammy, who is so wise, uh, just so, so much in love with the Lord, 
Um, she's actually going to start writing some of those uh, those inspirations for us, along with Shandy Burke, who does that for us. Um, and uh, and then also we've, uh, we're starting a new Facebook group just for the women called the Mama Bears. So uh, go to our website, and you can click on that and become a member of the Mama Bears. And Oh, I should say one more thing. I, I still have some of these left. This is the uh, a special teddy bear. It's a Catholic biker. It's black with a bi- Catholic biker riding it. Um, that was given to us. We have some of these left. So any any woman who goes and becomes a, a Patreon donor, ten dollars a month, they become part of the Mama Bears and they get the coffee mug and they get the kind teddy bear. So come come on, Mama Bears. And you know we're not talking about those sweet cuddly Mama Bears. We're talking about those ferociously. Those ferocious mama bears. I was watching a YouTube moment the other day, and this kid's uh, talking on the phone, and a mama bear comes up behind him, and he said, oh, isn't this cute? And then there's two cubs walking up on the deck with her, and I'm like, brother, that ain't cute, man. That's dangerous. She's up there with her cubs. You better, you should have exited right away because they fiercely protect the, the people that they love. So we love you, mama bears. We've got Deacon Gerard Marie Anthony with us from Chantilly, uh, Virginia, the St. Timothy Parish Center. Aloha, Deacon. Aloha. Yeah, what yeah, else yeah. do you see uh, in in young people? Uh, what what uh, one of the things I'm seeing is how do they? There's been kind of this sort of. Well, I'm just going to come out and say it. There's kind of a passive male. The men have been kind of yeah. pacified, and so the yeah. women are come up to me when I speak at theology on tap, and they go, "Where have all the men gone? You know, where? Yeah. They don't ask us out on dates, and if they do, they don't ever say talk seriously about getting married." Uh, what do you say to the young men out there, specifically? I would say for the, the the men out there, if you're listening, put your ear to the mic, to your speakers, and listen to these words. Go after greatness. You cannot be passive if you're going to be male. I mean, even it's in our very bodies. It's like we're meant to initiate. We can't just sit back and watch life pass by. Because here's the thing, you're not only hurting just yourself, you're also hurting those people that are going to depend on you. You have to be able to say, hey, look, I may get, because I know a lot of guys when I talk to them, the reason that they're afraid to ask now, is because I, well, what if she says no? Well, then she says no. <laughs> right. She wasn't the one. But that's a right? tough question. That's a tough roadblock to get by. I agree, though. But yeah. I mean, but here's the thing, and I would say this: you have to learn as a man. And this is something. Uh, even when I was doing one of my wedding preps, because uh, there's a, a wedding prep that I was doing where the guy was scared to ask out the girl, and uh, eventually they, you know, surprise spoiler alert, they ended up getting married. So clearly, he got some courage, right? Yeah. <laughs> but. Here's the thing that I told him, I said, you're focusing just on suffering, but what you have to do is transform that suffering into sacrifice, right? The suffering is she may say no, my feelings may get hurt, right? But suffering is pain without love. Sacrifice is pain with love. If you can learn how to sacrifice saying, hey, look, I love that girl. I love even at the point where they're when they're younger, I love what that girl could potentially be for me, right? Mm-hmm. A wife, a girlfriend, a fiance, even you know a great singer, someone who can relax me, right? Uh, even a good friend. Mm-hmm. If you can insert love into it, then all your suffering turns to sacrifice, and when you learn how to sacrifice, the more you know how to love then you get fulfilled. Then you also, I would say with that, sometimes as men, and I would encourage this as a second thing, surround yourself with good friends, good manly men, because who you surround yourself with will rub off a lot on who you become. So find someone who can actually be decisive. I mean, and that's important. Even be decisive in little things. That's important. Say, say what you mean and do what you say. Yet your, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Exactly. Very simple exactly. manly thing. And it's and it's scriptural too, you know. Yeah, it's very, <laughs> and, and yeah, and, and and like it says, you know, don't don't ha- hang around with scoffers. I have a friend Gerard Middleton in Cocoa Beach. He's a, one of the great sup surfers out there. He said he, he's certain people in his life. He says they're just not on my championship diet. 
I'm going oh, for I greatness. And, and, and that person, there's some people that in, in your life that you're meant there to serve, but a lot of people are just wasting your time and they're draining yeah. your energy. And he'll just say, that person is not on my championship diet. That person wants to sit and drink with me and talk negative stuff. And so that person just isn't on my championship diet. The other, the other thing I think about young men is <clears throat> if they were to be around during the time of a Nicene Creed, <clears throat> it wouldn't have been the Nicene Creed. It would have been the nice creed. You know, <laughs> I just want to be a nice guy. You know, and I want to just throw up when I think about <clears throat> it's got, those people that did the Nicene Creed. You know, Anth Athanasius, they were exiled. You know, they, yeah. I mean, those people that battle for the truth, it was, they, 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 I mean, they were thrown out in the desert or, or, or abandoned on, on, on islands. And they, 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 you need to get past being the nice guy and be the tough guy. A good man is not necessarily a nice man. There's a difference. Yes, and I, and I would say there ultimately the good man oftentimes is not the nice man because it's only for people that you don't really care about or that you want to be nice to that you don't tell them the truth. That you right. don't challenge them to be better. You got to be woke. Uh, so you can't tell them. You can't tell them. You can't tell them the way it is because you don't want to offend anybody. Well, the Bible says, "Love does not take offense." So if that person you're talking to has a lot of love, they won't take offense. And if they do, if they don't have a lot of love, they probably will. But we need to stop being nice guys. We need to st a woman wants a bold, confident man who knows where he's going, what his direction in life is, and so men. Um, <clears throat> One of the biggest fears I think they have is, well, these are my friends. These girls, we, you know, they're part of Theology on Tap, or I know them. They're my friends. And they're afraid if they ask them out and they say no, then they can't be in the friend zone with them anymore either. Right? Yeah. So too bad. You know, um, yeah. <laughs> time to get out of the friend zone. You know, I really yeah. don't know a lot of men that, that, that like to hang around with girls. You know? Yeah. It, it's mostly if you're hanging around with the girls, it's probably because there's a girl there that you're, you're interested in. Honestly, yeah. I mean, it's good to have fellowship <laughs> and, and have theology on tap and all that, but but get, it, get, don't live in the friend zone. Don't live in the nice guy zone. Uh, be a good man, and if there's a woman there that you're interested in, uh, you know, ask her out. Be bold. Ask yeah, her for, be bold. Be bold. Yeah, and they may have never never paid attention to you, but you'll stand out because you're the one that asked her out, and no one else does. Everyone, all the other nice guys. Are, uh, yeah. are 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 too afraid and, and just the very fact that you're bold enough to ask them out you know that usually honestly that will win a lot of women over because there are so many people that I mean and I know just from talking with women just uh, by parish a lot of them are so frustrated because it's like they know the guy likes them but he won't ask her out and exactly. sometimes they, they just they just they're like look i can't wait anymore and, and like i'm, I'm not interested and, in him anymore either because he's too weak you know i i know we hear this everywhere we go cindy and i will we'll, we'll get out of the car i'm speaking someplace and before you know it a cluster of women before or after will form around us they kind of form a little body they bl a block like a huddle and they will <laughs> whisper where have all the good men gone you know why don't the guys ask us out why don't they ask us to marry them so you men out there you know who I'm talking to, you young men especially. Pray for that woman uh, and be bold enough to ask her out for coffee. And if she says no, check that, out, that one off your list and, and begin to pray. But, and also I, I challenge the young men, pray for that woman. You may not even met her yet, but you should be praying for her. We've been talking with Deacon Gerard Marie Anthony. We're going to see you soon. And uh, hey, hey, maybe I could come to say hi, say speak to the parish, or maybe there's a theology on tap that I can speak at that when I'm oh, there. Oh, yeah, we'll ask. That would be great. First week oh, of September. First weekend of September. It's probably okay, yeah, too busy I'll, I'll a time. Learn. It's Labor Day, but that would really be cool. Uh, Deacon, where can they find you? People find you at jmjgerardmarie.com. If you want to find someone who's full of joy, uh, you really should look watch this YouTube video because. Uh, Deacon's uh, joy is contagious, and it should be. That should be. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Those of us involved in new evangelization, we rely on that because we're, we're working so hard, but we know it's the, the joy of the Lord that's our strength. We'll be, right back, we'll be back next week with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. And until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Man, 
I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.